Hey guys, big announcement today. This is a really important personal thing that I'm finally ready to share with the internet. I am happy to confirm that I am in a relationship and today I'm going to reveal that that relationship is with you. And we're about to have some counseling. we get it the internet is weird we feel like we know people but we don't accept we kind of really do but it's not real but what is real and it's fucked up and abusive but it's also sincere and sentimental and god i would rather just live on a remote island by myself <sighs> this is such an overdone topic and i'm kind of over it because i feel like it's not a shocking surprise about the nature of our content consuming world because it has always been a thing and maybe it's not all bad. If you haven't heard this yet, and this is a shock to you, then, oh boy, your entire concept of reality is about to implode when you realize that selling your organs for cash to donate to your favorite streamer so they notice you once perhaps wasn't the move. But I can link to a, a few videos from over the years below so you can have a nice crisis. Becoming obsessed with people, letting all that obsession sabotage your real relationships and completely fill the cracks in your crumbling life with their shiny perfect glue is not a new thing. You know who the OG parasocial crush was? Jesus. You read this book? Oh, I got a story for you. Jesus loves you. Jesus literally died for you. Jesus embraces you despite all of your sins, you naughty little thing. Jesus is perfect and he is a nice, attractive, Caucasian man with a clean beard and well shampooed hair. So hey, you give him everything. You give him your attention, give him your emotions, your donations, and just trust that he will give you something when you die. Sounds kind of one-sided. It's your great granddad listening to a beautiful sounding singer on the radio and fantasizing about running away with her, abandoning your family and trying to erase you out of existence. It's your mum watching the same hot BILF newsreader on the TV every day for the last 20 years. Hugh is the most reliable man you can find in your life. He is always there. He is articulate, informative, personable, professional, and I will agree, he is extremely fuckable and can absolutely get it. It's the queen dying and people queuing for over 24 hours to look at a box, which she definitely wasn't in. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> There's been like a national compulsory morning where I'm like, sure, queen, but like, I don't know, should I, should I be devastated? I mean, more devastated than natural. Parasocial. Always has been. And for the record, these are real relationships. They're just imbalanced, potentially problematic ones. People usually sum it up as, <laughs> but you don't even know them. And that's not true. Basically, everyone watching this right now knows me better than half of my friends and my entire family. I'll see a childhood friend on my birthday and they'll be like, oh, hi Dan, got you a purple t-shirt. It's your favorite color, right? Purple? No! Anyone who follows me on Twitter knows everything about my life. My grandma okay. frequently isn't sure if I'm actually alive. When I met Anthony Padilla for the first time after having watched Smosh since I was 14, it was exactly what I thought. <laughs> I did know him. We got on pretty quickly. I didn't have an unhealthy parasocial obsession with him building a nude mosaic in my basement or anything. These relationships are real and you can know someone. You just don't know what they do when they aren't doing content and you can only know what they show you. But sometimes you are shown more than the people in the real world. So what I want to say with this video is I feel like we are finally in a healthy relationship. Yeah, me and you, person who I know and love and appreciate and I would do anything for because you mean a lot to me. And without your support, I would have nothing. So please buy tickets and come see me on tourdanielhall.com. <laughs> I have had a wild ride on the internet after the last decade, and I finally feel like we're in a position of refreshing honesty, acceptance, respect, mostly. Um, well, thank you for the question, anal two fist. And just vibing. Just some immaculate vibes, TBH. All it took was for everyone to get six years older and mortified of their past, uh, half the population realizing they were queer the whole time, and thousands of pounds of therapy. Oh well, we got here! There is a difference between being honest with what you tell people and whether you tell people everything. You can have boundaries and integrity. Somehow I feel like that Dan and Phil finally tell the truth. 
somehow got there. Very extremely at the same time. They want the truth! Did we fuck? I mean, sure, there's some weirdos out there, but that's just humanity. We're weird as fuck. As long as it isn't the statistical majority, that's a goddamn win in my books. The misconception is that parasocial relationships are just when it gets bad and you get in too deep, but like mental health, it's not something that only exists when it's bad, it's something that you have all the time. We all have relationships with everyone, and if we don't personally know the person, it's parasocial. But it's still a relationship. It's like how some Americans don't realize that they have accents. Yeah, all language is in fact an accent, and you have an American accent. American is not the default human sound. Hello Americans, please support me on my tour through the USA that I think is probably still happening right now. It is perfectly possible to have healthy parasocial relationships with all of the media personalities in your life. You just have to check yourself. We all know that fans can be creepy. At its worst, a parasocial relationship can lead to Stalking, which might make someone rent a secret apartment for filming. Jealousy fueled attacks, feelings of personal betrayal when that person with a full life of their own doesn't do what you expected. But the consumers of the content can also be exploited. Media personalities trying to increase the intensity of your relationship with them via compliments and thank yous and sincere seeming shout outs that when you step back realize we're probably all somehow making that person more popular and giving them money. Wait a minute. Wait. <clears throat> Keep waiting. Sorry, I went to get a prop and ended up doing a fringe check. I ordered a goddamn salad for lunch and, you know, firstly, holy fuck, holy fucking fuck, it was delicious. But then they left a note saying, thanks for your first order with us. Hope it's the first of many more. Smiley face. Stop trying to manipulate me with that absurd body of yours, salad bowl. <sighs> it is the goal of funny brand Twitter accounts to tap you into a pipeline from joking about the intern that's actually a million dollar marketing corporation into purchasing their product. Do not simp for a social media agency. These relationships can be inherently abusive on both ends, but they can also be lovely. Twitch streamers, when they're not you know, asking for donations and flashing the butt cracks, just make me feel like I'm not alone in the house sometimes. It's reassuring, it's comforting to feel part of an online community and just enjoy someone's entertainment. These relationships can really emotionally benefit you if it's giving you something that you need and you relate to a person. And conversely, I like feeling supported by an audience. You know, when I'm standing on a stage trying to be funny and someone claps, that feels like a lovely, healthy, consensual social transaction that we just made there. I am tempted to try Twitch, but do you guys really think that the guy that made Why I Quit YouTube after three years would stream for hours every single day? No, we should all be terrified of what would happen in a world where I did that. Now, I would personally set on fire if I ever stepped into a church. <laughs> but maybe next time you pray, you can say, hey, you know what? Thanks for dying for my sins, Jesus, but I didn't ask, so you aren't entitled to my love. I mean, I appreciate you saying that you love me, but I will be honest, it is kind of creepy that your dad psychically knows everything about me, so I would like to maintain some distance, and I hope you can understand. There you go, healthy. As we look at where social media is going, however, I'm just afraid that our natural human instincts to desperately crave community interaction and intimacy will turn those of us that haven't already been parapilled into subservient simp slaves for the next generation of brand-sponsored VTuber idol influencers. People need to be taught to look out for the signs of this shit in schools. We can find some room in the curriculum. All right, sorry, Oxbow Lakes. <laughs> you are completely fucking pointless use of brain space. The more all of us are aware of insincere attempts to cultivate devotion for personal gain, the faster record labels can stop forcing poor pop stars to join TikTok. They just want to write music and perform. They don't want to make memes for the Zoomers, set them free. It's like a diet where we all need to just learn which of the parasocial relationships in our lives are healthy for us or incredibly toxic and destructive. What nutrients do they give you? Do they inspire you, make you feel welcome? just horny. You control the dosage and it's up to each of us whether we cut them out or intentionally give in and spiral into a nosedive of total life destruction. What is better, 
quality or quantity. One in-depth two-hour video a year or 20 hours of live streaming a day. And what is better, huh? Is it respect for me in the back of your mind or being right at the front of your life every day because I'm demanding devotion? Ah! All right, <clears throat> let's make a promise. I will respect your autonomy and never beg you for anything unless I get truly desperate and you just try to not get angry if some prophesized fan fiction doesn't come to life or get crushingly disappointed if you ever meet me and realize I am in fact six foot three and not three inches on your phone. That's what she said. Don't even know what that's implying. You can give me self-esteem and a sense of satisfying purpose and I'll continue to give you the thing that you enjoy from me, which I can only assume is a sense of confidence from comparing your ability to function as a human to mine. I say this in a healthy, respectful way. I appreciate you. And now I will return to making my mosaic. My masterpiece is almost complete. <laughs>